So over the past few months, I've talked to many people about inflation. We've talked about food prices and gas prices, home prices, we've talked about retail goods and even services. Everything was going up. But the good news was over the past month or so, things started to really come down. Food prices started to moderate. We've seen the retail goods really fall in price. Well, the fact that stores are closing is also helping with that. But again, this is what we started to see. Now, over the past couple of days, I've heard from a lot of people saying that everything's coming down. Everything is getting so much less expensive, right? Gas prices coming down. That's good news. Food prices coming down. Again, more good news. But the truth is, this is far from over. We are far from over. Now what we are seeing is there's more inflation fears for 2023 because of new reports that just came out this morning. Yeah, just this morning. Now, these are things that the Federal Reserve is looking at. And this is why I wanna bring this up because yes, these are important reports, but at the same time, this is what the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell looks at to determine is inflation, is inflation started to moderate or is this something that we need to still be extremely concerned with? Well, here's what I can tell you. Earlier on this week, we heard from the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, and he made it very clear due to wages continuing to rise, we will need to keep raising interest rates until we see wages start to moderate. We don't need to see them fall, but they have to moderate. They need to stay consistent. Well, one of the reports that we got this morning, this is extremely important because this is the Employment Cost Index. It came out this morning as well as the PCE report. Now in Q1 of the Employment Cost Index, it was expected to be 1.1%. In the previous quarter, it was 1%. So right there, and again, this is part of the problem, is in the Employment Cost Index, okay, in Q4 of 2022, we're sitting at 1%. And then the expectation is it's going to go up to 1.1% for the first quarter of 2023. Well, the report that came out this morning, it shows that the employment cost index is actually 1.2%. Again, this is not much higher than what was expected. However, and this is the problem, is it was 0.2% higher than the previous quarter. So that right there shows growth. That's not what the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell wants. He wants to see everything is level or we see it actually go down, but he does not want to see growth. That's the last thing that the Federal Reserve wants to see is growth in a time when they are continuing to raise rates. We could, we should be able to see inflation go down. That's the problem. And just very quickly, we'll go over the PCE report. Month over month was expected to be at 0.1%, and it was. Month over month core was expected to be at 0.3%, and that matched as well. So PCE came out as expected, which again is good news. Now, in an interview that, that went on earlier this week, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said multiple times that in order to get inflation back down, there will be substantial pain. Now, based off of recent reports, based off statements, uh, interviews, just different videos that I have seen lately from financial experts, almost every single one believes that the substantial pain that everybody keeps talking about has yet to come. Just imagine that. We've been in this, this very interesting time for the past two years, right? But what is this pain? What are we going to see? Well. Here's what we're going to see, and this is what some are expecting. We're going to see uh, the stock market take a hit. We could see an additional 20% drop. Home prices are going to fall. We know this. We are expecting this, but we're still waiting for this. And some are saying that home prices will completely fall off a cliff as we continue to raise rates, as inflation stays where it is, 
as Americans lose their savings, nobody's going to be able to buy a home, at least not at these current rates. And so home prices are going to have to just fall off a cliff in order to uh, you know, get more people to buy. But we'll see. Also, lending is going to come to a complete halt. Banks are going to struggle. Banks are going to close down because they don't have the liquidity that if customers come in and ask for their money and banks have to give it to them, guess what? The bank might not be able to operate. This is gonna be another one of those Silicon Valley bank issues. That's what we're gonna have. Another uh, point of pain in the market is gonna be credit card debt. According to experts, they say, this is gonna increase even more because again, the American people are using more and more of their savings in order to pay for things like their rent, food, utilities, gas for their cars, insurance, cell phone bills, all these things. This is what we're paying for. They also say as credit card debt increases and more people cannot afford to uh, buy food, then they will have to decide, do they pay for a bill or do they hold on to that money and they pay for food and they put gas in their car? and they make sure they can pay their rent. Well, there's two things that we have to do. We need to have a place to sleep, and we need to have something in our stomach. We need to have food. Well, here's what experts are now saying. Repossessions of cars are going to ramp up. We've already seen repossessions start to tick up slowly, but some are saying that pretty soon, this will be one of the big pain points because people will realize they can take public transportation they can carpool, they can walk, they can ride a bike, which would be much cheaper than filling up your car with fuel you know, every day and driving 30 minutes to work. Again, walking 30 minutes to work or walking, say, 10 miles to work, it's going to take a lot more than 30 minutes, but you get the idea. Some are saying that they can take a bus, they can carpool, they can find a way to get to work, and they do not need a car. Again, this is gonna cause people to stop paying their car payment. They might not call the bank to see, hey, I can't make my payment, here's the car. Most banks aren't gonna take a car back, but if they try to, they try to sell it, let's say on just the open market, guess what? People are going on a deal. People don't wanna be buying a, a car for the, the same price that you paid for it when it's not worth that. Again, more pain in the market because right now, Prices for vehicles are dropping. Another one, you know, we talked about, you know, home prices, they're gonna have to fall. Well, the other, the other worry right now is foreclosures. Some are saying that foreclosures are going to pick up. And I know a bunch of people have talked about this before that there's no way we see foreclosures go up when banks are, well, come May 1st, will be able to provide a 40 year loan Here's the thing, in order to qualify for a 40 year loan, you have to be uh, you know, behind on your payments, okay? You have to have a risk of foreclosure and default, okay? If this happens, again, you still have to go to the right bank and you still have to get approved. You still have to get approved. And do you think banks are gonna be willing to uh, just give out a 40 year loan, okay? You're 10 years on top of what you probably already have, if you cannot afford to pay that payment, if you have other debt and that's the reason why, the bank is gonna look into it and be like, well, you got three car payments, you got you know 17 credit cards, you got student loan debt, you got medical bills, and you got this house, there's no way you can afford all of it. Guess what? The only option is a foreclosure. And if all this stuff happens, or just some of these things, obviously that's, you know, detrimental to the economy, but this is going to hurt. But if inflation, which is coming down, it's starting to come down nicely, went from 6% a month ago, or two months ago to a month ago, it was only 5%. What's it gonna go to in about a week, two weeks? Well, could we see it go to 4%? Could it go to 4.7%? Is it gonna go to 5.1%? This is gonna matter. If inflation picks back up, that could be a lot more pain, not just in the markets, but in the entire economy. And again, 
This is why I say this is far from over, because as of right now, there's still some signs out there that are pointing to additional upward inflation. That is not what we want. So as we get more information as to what is going on regarding inflation, regarding what the Fed is going to do, and anything that's going to impact your wallets, I promise I will bring you the latest news and updates. All you got to do is two things. Go ahead and hit that like button on this video. Also click that subscribe button so you never miss an update. And I will see you guys on the next one.